for you? Um, going back, I don't know, maybe 20 years or so now? Oh, well, it would be, yeah. I mean, it depends where you start because uh, as, as you know, the, the fantasy literature has been a really important part of, of my journey. I was uh, not brought up in a religious home at all. Um, not anti-Christian, but also not religious at all. Uh, so I was really not exposed to even, even the basic ideas of Christianity. Uh, and it was not surprising then that when I went off to college and was put into a more thoroughly secular atheist environment, I became a thoroughgoing atheist and ended up only really challenging that and reconsidering that um, in my early 30s. But what was it that brought me to the point where I was willing to look at these arguments? And when I thought about that, when I was writing my memoir, traced it back to my early experience with fantasy literature, because I had grown up steeped in reading um, C.S. Lewis from folklore, fairy tales, and Tolkien played such an important part because I, I can't even remember quite when I read The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings for the first time. I can only remember rereading them. So they, they were part of my imaginative landscape very early on. And so I had a kind of picture of the good, the true, the beautiful that I had no idea I had any connection to Christianity really until I was in my 20s, I discovered that C.S. Lewis was writing about Jesus and I, I became quite angry with him for a bit um, until I realized that, oh, well, it's all right. He can have those little views. Um, very condescending of me at the time. Then when I did my PhD dissertation, I did it on the history of the modern fantasy novel, obviously had to deal with Tolkien um, and the Lord of the Rings. And I was an atheist at the time, but this brought me back into contact with the fact that he and Lewis were authors whom I loved and admired and respected as thinkers, as authors. And this reminded me in a sense that there are a lot of really great writers who, who believe this stuff. And it eventually prompted me years after that to start thinking, well, what did they believe? And you know, just to understand better what they thought. And then it became apparent to me that it was actually true and I was going to have to do something about that um, and hence becoming a Christian. But I also want to say just briefly that I, I owe a really a double debt to Tolkien. Um, I've been really engaged with Tolkien as a literary critic for, and this will date me, more than 30 years. Because when I was a teenager, I came across a battered copy of the Tolkien Reader, um, this collection of, of essays and short pieces that include his great essay on fairy stories. And in it, he presents his argument for the nature of fantasy. He also has an epilogue and a close to it that puts the gospel forward in a really powerful way. And so that really, to that essay, I owe a twofold debt because I was so moved by that brief presentation of the gospel, even though at the time it wouldn't be for another 20 years or so that I would even begin to consider whether it was true. But that was genuinely the first time that I heard the gospel was mm -hmm. in Tolkien's essay. But also that essay, I would say, made me a literary critic. Hmm. So that that's why now here in 2020, as we record this, um, I have just you know written a literary critical study of Tolkien and his influences. Because back you know when I was 14 or so, and I read that essay, he was showing me what it meant to be thoughtfully examining literature in a way that was appreciative and not destructive. And I think that really set the path for me in terms of how to engage with, with literature. So I really owe this twofold debt to, uh, to Tolkien.